Hey everybody, this is Randy Hales, Memphis Wrestling, and you are listening to Live and in the Color with Sir Wolfie. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13, to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. And today we have a extremely special guest. And let me introduce him first as the first ever three-time guest, the first ever 24-hour record holder, and I think it's been said the official third member of PG-13, Mr. Randy Hales. Randy, welcome to the show, my friend. Got to start off. As Lance Russell, yellow again, everybody. Randy Hills and Jimmy Street right around ringside, all ready to go with a big, big day. And I'll steal the name of my show of Talking Memphis Wrestling. Yes, and that is an extremely great show, by the way. So, y'all, look for it. It's on Facebook, YouTube. You can find it everywhere that a video can be played on social media. Honestly, one of the best shows. I watch it every week and really enjoy it because, you know, I grew up a mid-Atlantic kid, so I need to learn my Memphis stuff. I've learned the basics of it, but when you want to learn the intricate details of Memphis wrestling, there is no better person to go to than Randy Hales and his shows, honestly. And I say that with absolute confidence. I appreciate that very much. So this then you let's go inside baseball a little bit. I was on a trip. I was about an hour away and uh, you asked, you told me, you said, Hey man, we want you for the third time, but we got something going on, something going on. Have you told the people what the something is yet? Well, as you all can hear, and Randy is alluding to here, we do not have Wolfie D's voice on the show today. So obviously, 75 episodes of me and Wolfie together as a tag team, and today we had to enlist the help of Randy Hales because right now, our hero, Wolfie D, is not feeling well. He's actually possibly going to go to the emergency room. He woke up feeling very ill. You know, Thursdays, we normally record on a Thursday, and today was Thursday, and it came up, and he said, hey, man, I woke up and I'm feeling sick. Can we do this? Can we do that? I shot him a message back. I said, let's talk to Randy Hales. You know, Randy has come through in a pinch for us before. And, you know, so I called you and I said, hey, you answered first or second ring. And you were like, let me figure it out. And here we are. So Randy, first off, let's say prayer for Wolfie D. Hopefully it's nothing bad, just a cold. Maybe it's something simple. I do know the flu is going around. But second off, Randy, thank you so much for doing this. Hey, glad to do it. I've made the hot tag for Wolfie D many, many times, so I'll be glad to make a hot tag for Jimmy Street as well. I'm honored to be able to do this because it is my mission in life to keep the legacy of Memphis wrestling alive and a big part of my legacy in the office and as a booker and the owner, founder, and president of Power Pro Wrestling was PG-13, absolutely. Not Jamie, not so much. Power Pro, because he was bandaged, banned, <laughs> right. not right. allowed. But uh, certainly, Wolfie did great work on Power Pro Wrestling. And, and by the way, I told you on the phone earlier, I listened to the episode that you did have. It took you a year or two to do it, but finally, right. Wolfie talked him into it. And I thought it was a very entertaining episode, and not one thing... And I didn't listen to the whole thing, but not one thing he said irritated me. So that's the first time in my life of knowing Jamie Dundee since he was probably eight or nine years old that I listened to him for an hour and he didn't irritate me. So that's pretty good. <laughs> It was true. And, you know, Jamie, honestly, I felt like he was in a good place mentally. I felt like he and Wolfie have really covered some ground in their relationship as far as buddies and friends. You know, obviously, it's best for everybody if PG 13's getting along. And I thank you for listening, Randy. It really means a lot because I tell you what, I worked very hard on that show. I wanted that show to be one of our best shows because I knew so many people would be listening for that. So, you know, once again, thank you for listening, brother. And, I will say this. Jamie is always welcome back. One of the guys that broke your record 
of the single day is Jamie. So we know that was a special record for you, but at the same time, being second place isn't too bad, especially when, you know, the PG-13 reunion is obviously probably going to take first place. And who helped create the success that PG-13 did? Not to be too egomaniac, but I'm a professional wrestling guy, so uh, I'm not convinced that certainly Jerry Jarrett uh, hired him through a recommendation from from Jeff Jarrett. Lawler used him at all, but I yeah. don't think whether it's Jerry Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, I don't know if any what one of them would have pulled the trigger to give them the ball and give them main events, that sort of thing. And we did do that, and it was one of the smartest decisions and one of the most successful and best decisions I ever had in my life. And like you, I'm going to send Whoopi prayers out, and I know how it's going on. know a lot of people here in my hometown of Jonesboro, Arkansas, that has the flu as a matter of In fact, I've been thinking, man, do I need to go? I've never had a flu shot in my life. I've had the the shingle shot and the pneumonia shot and the COVID shot, but I've never had the flu shot. And I've been thinking recently, and now you're telling me that it's a possibility. That's what Whoopi has, possibility. Uh, We don't know. Obviously, we're not doctors. But certainly, I'm thrilled to death, and I thank you for coming to reaching out. And I, again, love talking Memphis wrestling. Yeah, well, you are the best at it, and I agree. So first off, I hope everyone had a very happy new year. It's the second of the year. And, you know, the biggest thing after the new year is what, Randy? Everybody makes New Year's resolutions, right? Everybody. Absolutely. Everybody wants to do their best, whether they go back to the gym, whether they want to eat better, whether they want to, you know, see their kids more, whether they want to just go on vacations more, work harder, get a new job. There's a million different resolutions. So as you saw on the welcome mat, you saw the name of this episode is the top 10 New Year's resolutions for pro wrestling. Now, what this is, is these are our wishes for what pro wrestling should, could, or would do in 2023. So Wolfie actually came up with this idea. He came up with it a few days ago before he got ill. And like I said, it was all planned to work it out with him being our top 10 episode streak that we're on right now. But in a pinch, Randy Hales can come up with a top 10. He probably has a top 20 if we're being honest. Let's go on and get started. But first, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after these messages. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A -a one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Hey folks, to get your official Live and in Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, we are back with the top 10 New Year's resolutions for pro wrestling in 2023. And once again, we are featuring the always welcome to the show and one of our most popular guests, Mr. Randy Hales. So Randy, being that you're the guest and the honorary host and the three-time, three-peat guest, we are going to let you go first with your number 10. And I loaded the first few that I'm going to say, I loaded it up a little bit with current stuff and then Memphis stuff. At the top, and one thing that I want to say that actually a couple of these that I have on my list, I am in the planning stages of absolutely making it happen. Some of it that I will say today is not very realistic. Some of them in the works to happen. So I just wanted to to make that that clear right there as we do this list. So you're ready for my number 
10? Yes, sir. I would like, on my number 10, to play the hatchet man a little bit. Play the promoter. Play the producer. My number 10 is to take Excalibur from AEW off of Dynamite and off of Rampage and return if health is permitting because there might be a valid reason that JR, Jim Ross, is not on the show. But Excalibur, I think, is one of the worst wrestling announcers I've ever heard. He's When he gets high, he's as, as far as inflection in his voice, he's too high. He's into wrestling Lucha Libra and also New Japan, All Japan, that sort of thing. He invents names of holds and that sort of thing it's very very frustrating and aggravating and i think that him and i know that's dave Meltzer's boy and he thinks he's great and i know tony khan and it's tony khan's company and he has that right i know the young bucks hate him i'm not saying firing because i'm sure he can add in other ways just take him off the air so excalibur being taken off as the lead host, can you believe it? You have Tony Schiavone, you have Jim Ross, and you have this mask guy. I know I sound a little bit about like Jim Cornette, but <laughs> obviously that would be a step number one for me. And so that's my number 10. You know, Randy, I couldn't agree with that more. I don't like the mask. I get that it's a gimmick. I also really, you know, to, when he's doing those little promo shots, when they're doing an image and they're doing promos for upcoming matches, he is saying things so fast. And I think it must be a timing thing that they're trying to, you know, squeeze this amount of time in with all these words. He's saying things so fast. I don't understand any of it. It really doesn't make any sense to me. And you're right. He does reach a level of inflection and, and to know that two of the greatest, I mean, Lance Russell, unfortunately, isn't sitting there. So the greatest is not available. But Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, those guys are lead guys, well seasoned lead guys. And I know some people complain a little bit about JR calling Big Show, Big Show, and well, you know, all these things. But to be honest, those little mistakes from a absolute veteran of this industry, you know, to me, you're right. Why are they giving this masked kid the ball? (laughs) Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. So that is my number 10. Well, my number 10 is also something that is extremely important while not current, but it should be. My number 10 is I think Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express desperately need to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. They're should not be one more year that that goes by without that being fixed. We lost Bobby. In my opinion, one of the greatest to ever put boots on in a ring. We lost him. He is not going to be there. I know that would have meant a lot to him. Dennis Condry still alive. Stan Lane still alive. Let's put them together. Let's get them in the WWE Hall of Fame. And I'm I'm saying it's got to be now. Because I know that the way that they put things in, they don't put a lot of people in after they die. Meaning what happens is, is they usually pick one person that's passed away and they will put them in. If we lose one one more member, it could put them down into the, you know, 2040s before they get in. And I just think it has to be done immediately. What, what do you think about that, Randy? A hundred percent. Now I go back Midnight Express wise further than you do, because with the Midnight Express, probably the first group that you saw was Dennis Condry. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. The this, this situation with Dennis Condry and Bobby Eaton. I go back before that because it pretty much started in Southeastern Championship Wrestling, Pensacola. Yeah. And then it came to Memphis in the late 70s or maybe even the early 80s, probably the early 80s. But the first Memphis Midnight Express was Dennis Condry, Norvell Austin, and Randy Rose. Then, right. obviously, in 19. 19- uh, 83, the end of 83, start of 84, the Midnight Express, as we first knew it from a national standpoint, was Dennis Condry, lover boy Dennis Condry, beautiful Bobby, manager Jim Cornette. And that was the first time that Cornette was involved. And then it evolved later. They went to Dallas and 
Dennis and Bobby then went to WCW, went to the Crockett Promotions, and then Dennis obviously flew the coop. And then here comes Stan Lane. They didn't miss a boat. But I 100% think they're worthy and deservedly so, and I think that it's a crying shame if they don't get that. However, I would guess with Triple H, who, just face it, he was more of a historian about classic old school wrestling than Vince McMahon was. And I think that he would want them in. I think 100% he would want them in. And right. and I think Vince would say, even though Vince did put the rock and roll and there's been others in, but I, I just don't see him ever agreeing to the Midnight Express being in the Hall of Fame. So I'm all with you, my man. Right. Yeah. Well, we we can hope on it. I I know what you're saying, though. If Vince still has any pull, you're probably right on that. And it could be Jim Cornette that's causing the the slowdown. Who knows? I don't know. And and I I wouldn't say Jim Cornette's side of it. I'm just saying maybe they're worried about him. Although Jim did induct the rock and roll. So who knows? Anyway, what what about your number nine, Randy? We're going to talk a little current wrestling. Before I say mine... Let's just talk a little bit about my philosophy as far. I'm not going to say writing pro wrestling because I'm not a writer. I'm a booker. So we're going to talk about booking wrestling. I tell you, it's all about with me drawing money, drawing ratings, pay-per-views, that sort of thing, getting income out of that. And to do that, personal issues draw money. My number nine is pretty controversial to some people. I understand it. And as we're taping this, I listen to Busted Open on Sirius Radio today, and they are mentioning this. And and this is absolutely no brainer as far as personal issues, draw money. Memphis was the best in the world about that. I say to have CM Punk returns at full gear. The site of this year's, obviously, scrum or whatever it was that Punk went for business on his own and ended up in the fight and suspension. I think you need to make amends. You think you have to get with everybody and say, hey, we need to turn this in to good programming, good booking, make a million dollars, $10 million off of this. And I think that's the mainstream type of, because Punk's a mainstream guy, I think if you did something like that and still present the wrestling product, like, hey, make people think, hey, we're going to really see a fight here. So that's my number nine, Punk returning at full gear and a big, big personal issue deal with the Young Bucks and with with uh, Kenny Omega, I think it would be great. Yeah, I agree. And that is actually a good point there, Randy, because I was actually going to bring that up a little later in the show, but I like that you brought it up now because it is so pertinent and important to right now. To me, I think you're right. There's too much money to be had from this for them to I, not let their egos, you know. It's a, it's a no-brainer. You know? Actually, absolutely a no-brainer. Now, I want to, if you don't mind, Jimmy, I want to just to to make this clear to our audience that's listening to this, and and they will maybe say, man, they're reacting naturally about each other's list. I have not seen your list. You have not seen mine. Right, correct. correct. Absolutely. And that is known from the Wolfie shows. You know, Wolfie always says, now we haven't done this, you know, so we don't know what each other's going to say. So that is definitely something that we stand by because it's it's more of a natural reaction rather than a, you know, a, a yes fest with each other, you know, because Wolfie for sure doesn't always agree with mine. And, and I would welcome any disagreement as a way to learn, if anything. So I couldn't agree more, though. I think it's way too much money to be left. And I think it would be a, a wonderful return for him to relevance in the current scene because they sure haven't let his name die. Let's just say that. You know what I mean? So, you know, here's one thing. Some people were calling in 
Now, Bubba, Bubba Ray, Bully Ray, and Tommy Dreamer, and Dave LaGreca, everybody's saying, and the callers would call me in and say, he's a cancer to the dressing room. He's a cancer to the dressing room. Oh, that's, that's terrible. What does that do with your locker room? Screw the locker room. Most of those guys can be replaced. Right. They really can. I yeah. mean, they absolutely can be replaced. You go number one for money. Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee drew more money in this territory than anybody. The longest program ever that went for years and off and on for years and years and years. They weren't best buddies. They right. did what was best for business. They were as opposite as opposite can be. So sure, Punk's different. The Bucks and Omega's different. Hangman Page is different. But I can tell you right now, big part of Lawler and Dundee drawing money was Jerry Jarrett wanted them to be a little friction. So I can't believe Jerry or Bill was complaining about you. And he just make it up. Yeah. Yeah. And vice versa, he go to Bill. That that gum now, Bill, you're in every town, and Lawler don't go to every town. And said, "That's just terrible. That's mm-hmm. just terrible." And he's stirring it up. He's yeah. stirring it up. Conflict draws money, especially in that era. So whether and obviously you said you agree with me, and I want you to, if you disagree with anything I say, throw it out there. I'm just like you. But I'm, my number nine is exactly what that is, and that's punk returning at full gear. I think that's great, and that's why I love having you on the show, Randy, because honestly, I learned something and and or am reminded of something every time you're on, so definitely more of a treat than just having you alone as the knowledge and stories. Of, because, you know, Wolfie isn't, he's a self-professed non-historian, and I understand the man took thousands of bumps, so to know that, you know, maybe some memories have been jarred loose and pushed into a wrestling mat somewhere. I know that sometimes he forgets some stuff and it's good to have a historian on that, you know, and I'll call you a historian, whether you say you're not or are or whatever. No, I'm calling I, you. I would, yeah. I would agree with that. I think me and Jim Cornette are up there as far as remembering stuff. We have a different outlook of it because I grew up watching Memphis TV. He yeah. saw the same show, but it was a week delayed and it was in Louisville. It's just a whole different thing where I was seeing the stories play out in Memphis at the Coliseum. He was seeing it in Louisville. It's a different perspective, but I love listening to his podcast when he's talking Memphis stuff. I absolutely love it. Oh, I bet you do. Yeah. It would be interesting to have you guys on together sometime. You know, I don't know how we could work that out, but even if it were on a different show, I would be glad to listen to that from start to finish. So speaking of, you know, Jim and you and the the area and territory you all came from and loved, and I think we're some of the best at this. My number nine is either more diverse looks and styles or the continuation of diverse looks and styles. No matter how you look at the current wrestling product right now, wrestling is starting to have guys look too much alike. Now, while I do think there is a been a little more diversity with the, you know, introduction of people like, you know, Sami Zayn, uh, Kevin Owens, you know, even people like the Young Bucks or something to that effect. I want to see more diverse looks and styles. What made Memphis, the CWA, what made the USWA, what made Power Pro, what made Jim Crockett, what made Mid-South, what made even the classic 80s wrestling from the WWF? You had thousands of wrestlers that did not look exactly alike. Now, some may say this is my getting older. I am 44 years old. I am a little stuck in my ways but man there was something about seeing guys that did not look like cookie cutter guys you know and i i'm a tattoo guy i've got quite a few of them but at the same time not every wrestler needs a thousand tattoos needs a shaved head even though that i have a shaved head and you know they don't all need to look or the normal guys in black trunks and boots with a little writing on the the trunks there i want to see diverse looks and styles in my wrestling 
wrestlers. What about you, Randy? What do you think about that? Absolutely, 100%. And I can throw some names that going back to the 70s in Memphis, psycho a, a top hill crew would have been Don and Al Green. Both yes. different sizes. Don was probably 240 pounds more of a technical wrestler. Al Green was 260 pounds pounds and just looked like he can kick your ass i mean just absolutely looked and then if you uh, you can just go up and look at different eras of the hills and the one person that i think that you have to mention is phil hickerson phil hickerson was tag team partners with al green and later on my favorite hill team of all times not the midnight express my favorite hill team of all time, there's two of them. The, the first one, without a doubt, is Dennis Condry and Phil Hickerson. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. My other one that I would say, one of my favorites, and, and there's just a conflict or, or varying styles on uh, from Hickerson and Condry on the team I'm going to mention, beautiful Bobby Eaton. And his tag team partner, Sweet Brown Sugar, Coco Ware. Yeah. I think just the variety of different looks all the way up and down the card. Todd Babyface in the 70s, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. Getting older, people believed he could kick ass. He was 240 uh, pounds with a little bit of a beer belly, but they thought he could kick ass. In contrast was Jerry Jarrett, maybe when he started, 170 pounds, got a little heavier as it went on, but he was the pretty boy. He was the one that drew the girls. He was the first heartthrob, and still today in Louisville, Kentucky, he drew more money than anybody, and his regular tag team partner was Tojo Yamamoto, and Tojo, long time, Japanese heel, Switz baby face under the angle. He was the mentor of Jerry Jarrett. He made the save. And whether it was a heel or a baby face, Tojo is absolutely 100%. Tell me right now, as we're taking kind of a little break, because we didn't know where this show was going, and now right. I'm getting fired up here. I love it. <laughs> Tell me right now anybody that looks like Tojo Yamamoto. I mean, you don't have one. You come to Memphis, Tennessee. You come to Louisville, Kentucky. You come to Nashville, Tennessee. You go to Birmingham, Alabama. You come to Jonesboro, Arkansas, Bobo, Arkansas, Tupelo, Mississippi. Did I say Chattanooga? Wherever the case may be, when you talk about wrestling, probably I would say the first, because he was unique, the first name that's mentioned is Tojo Yamamoto. Second right. name mentioned would be Jackie Fargo. Then as the eras change, if you get somebody a little younger, then they would say Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee. You won't right. say Jerry Lawler without saying Bill Dundee if you're a Memphis wrestling fan. You just won't. It won't come right. to your mind. Right. Absolutely. Right. So I like what you have there. Well, thank you. And I appreciate yours, too, because, you know, th that's the reason we're doing this is I love hearing what your thoughts are, especially when it comes to pro wrestling, because we both love it so much. So with that being said, I say, let's go ahead and you do number eight, Randy. Give us yours. I'm going to be controversial again. I'm going to go to current wrestling again, and I'm going to go a route that most people uh, think I'm crazy. What did I say earlier when I listed Punk returning, I said it would be controversial, but why was my reason? Personal issues draw money. You have to get to the people. You think something real is going on. What I would do if it's legally possible involved in a personal issue storyline for WrestleMania Television only, pay-per-view only. I'm not saying have him run the whole show, but I'm saying Vince McMahon returns to WrestleMania Ooh. as the one-off. Yeah, okay. So, you know, what's funny is previously, a couple weeks ago, maybe the last week, I said, Wolfie, there's talks of Vince McMahon wanting to come back and essentially saying he got some bad advice, la-da-da. -da. And Wolfie's like, there's your storyline right there. 
bring back yeah. the and who would come back the biggest heel and nobody thought he could be a bigger heel than when he was working with stone cold in the 90s but bring him back now he's going to be the biggest heel in the world now as a one-off i i like what you're going with there because what that would do is that would either piss off and in wrestling the beauty of wrestling to me is it can be taken so many different ways and still get to the same point if people hate vince mcmahon for what he did or what he's done or whatever he's the biggest heel if people love him because hey he's getting ass or whatever they're gonna love him wrestling could make money off of the divide that is honestly splitting this country apart. And I don't want to go, we don't ever go political here, but there is a big divide in a lot of thought processes in the country as we know. So treating Vince McMahon almost as that divide in a sense is genius because you can still make money off that divide anyway. Does that make any sense, Randy? Absolutely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So that was my number eight. Jimmy I love, Shape, what's your I number love, eight? All right, my number eight, Randy Hales, is less belts. So AEW is bad about it right now because they really haven't drawn a line between AEW and Ring of Honor. Aside from the one event with Ring of Honor, there really isn't a big division with them. And I would love to see less belts. Now, also in WWE, I'm not going to let them off the hook. I love the U.S. Championship. I'm a huge Mid-Atlantic fan, as everybody knows. Magnum TA, it's to me, heck, you could call it the Magnum belt. But when it comes down to it, I feel like there's way too many belts right now. I would love to see a unification of the Universal and the WWE heavyweight title. I don't think there's anything greater than being the world heavyweight champion of your promotion. That's all it needs to be. There doesn't need to be an extension of that by being some sort of intergalactic universal bullshit. Just make it one champion. I respect when there's two different companies and you're running two different promotions inside that company. But at the same time, let's do a little less belts. They need to be more special because honestly, what is it in the back you wanted to make the most money? And a lot of times the belts were the way to do that because that meant the company trusted you enough and that meant you were probably making some of the highest paychecks out of the whole locker room. In regards to that, though, in today's time with the guaranteed contracts, that doesn't always mean that. Some people just do not need the world heavyweight title. You could argue that although Jerry the King Lawler was usually the champion, he did not necessarily need that title to be as massively popular in the Memphis area. Also similar to that is somebody like The Undertaker, who did not need a belt to make him huge. They were still popular with or without that. Andre the Giant didn't need a belt. Andre the Giant is one of the first to do it that did not need the title. My thinking on that is, is let's make Make them more special by taking about 10 of them away. And again, I'm looking at you, AEW. I love the idea of a six-man tag team. I do, Randy, because I'm a huge tag team fan. And honestly, adding a six-man, it reminds me of those old days that you would have six-man tag champions like the Koloffs and the Russians, and you would have tag teams like Road Warriors and Dusty, you know, the Freebirds. I mean, all those trios are great. I love that. I don't know that there needs to be a belt for that. Also, you know, I feel like... The Ring of Honor line, once they draw that, it may be okay a little more. But again, there's like 30 world titles of some level, whether highest or lowest in AEW. I don't know, but that's my opinion. Let's let's break down some of these belts and and send them back to Dave Milliken, and hopefully (laughs) he can turn them into something else. I will go kind of in the same direction, and I agree with that, but I won't. Oh, are you ready for a rant? This might be a cornet worthy rant in yes. a yes. way, but this is a thing that aggravates me, and cornet has the best word for it. We used to say just outlaw promotions. Now they say independent promotions, but he calls it outlaw mud shows, and I love that. I think that's an absolutely fantastic description of it. But my point is that every single solitary, I don't care if they run three times a year in Humboldt, Tennessee, or Trenton, Tennessee, or somewhere in Mississippi, every outlaw mud show has their own world 
champion. And that makes me, that just makes me totter in heck. If I go uh, in and and somebody all the time, they say, hey, we want to promote our, our show uh, and blah, blah, blah. Now I said, well, fine. But when they'll send me a card and if it says, say, uh, NUX World Championship, I'd say NUX Heavyweight Champion. I will not call that a world champion totally it makes me hot going into the whole thing a lot of things about modern wrestling does make me hot and i'll go back to my company power pro wrestling the main single championship was the power pro heavyweight championship we didn't yeah. call it a world champion you don't need that now in the early days of of Memphis wrestling on the Memphis end, the main belt, the world title of Memphis, but it wasn't called that. It was the Southern Heavyweight title. Same right. thing with the Southern Tag Team Championship. When it switched over to the USWA, USWA Heavyweight Champion, USWA Tag Team Champions, the PG-13 probably had more than anybody. It makes me frustrated it makes me think people running wrestling don't understand it now right. i'm pretty much directing to that to the outlaw mud shows however i agree with you about aew because one of the things he basically said tony khan basically said when they started aew we're not going to have a thousand championships like right. the wwf or wcw used to that sort of thing we'll have the AEW World Heavyweight Championship and and uh, AEW Tag Team Championship. And then it wasn't a, a month later, they had the TNT Championship. And now they have so many. I, I can't even name, I don't even want to name them at all. But it's ridiculous. It takes away from your main championship. It's just ridiculous. I, I mean, it's the Stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs> I love it. Randy, you know, you just reminded me of something when you brought up PG and their 16-time tag team champions. We have a listener, his name's Ben Martin, and he's actually brought up an interesting point that we did on an Ask Wolfie D Anything very early on in this 75, 76 episode run that we've had so far. He brought up the question of the USWA tag belts. And here's his question. I'm going to read it to you because I think you might be the best guy to answer this. Thank you again, Ben, for listening as always. He says, hey, sorry to bother you, but just in case you don't remember, I asked you and Wolfie about the USA wrestling belts being repurposed as the USWA tag belts. He says, I asked Bo James about it, and this was his response. Pretty simple. Ron Fuller sells USA to Dave Woods. He keeps the USA heavyweight belt, has it till this day. The USA tag belts become the continental tag belts, even though they say plainly right on them, USA tag belts. Woods shuts CWF down in 89, sometime in early 90. They show up in Memphis. The tag belts get repurposed for that. The new continental belt becomes the Southern title. My guess is... Woods calls up Jerry Jarrett or Lawler, says, hey, I've got these nice new shiny belts. I'm willing to sell them. And he bought them. That's the only thing I can figure, although I might run that by Ron next time I see him or next time I talk to Randy Hales. And I'll revisit this question. Do you have anything about that? No, I really don't. But I will say I will just have a theory on that. I would say that Jerry Jarrett or anybody uh, else in the Memphis office, whether it would have been Jerry Lawler or me or whoever, didn't call David Woods and want to buy a championship. Whatever, say let's say the U.S. Um, a tag team champions, say the very last USA tag team champions. Say after Continental closed up, then they whatever Hill tag team or Babyface either. It didn't matter. Come to to the area, they just took the belts with them. They didn't leave it with David Woods. They brought oh, the belts okay. with them, whoever was the champion. And then they said to Jarrett, Arthur Lawler, it wasn't to me uh, at all. That was one of my hiatuses from the company when I was mad at Jerry Jarrett. But anyway, <laughs> I, I think that that's more likely. 
that's okay. more likely. Somebody won them and took them with them, basically. Got it. Yes. That makes a lot of sense, actually. He sent in a picture, which is funny. It shows Ron and Bunkhouse Buck, and I'm so stupid for not knowing his name right now. Jimmy Golden. It shows Ron Fuller and Jimmy Golden with the USWA tag straps on them with the black leather. And then, of course, we see the famous pictures with Wolfie and Jamie with the red leather on the plates. So, anyway. USA was a great promotion that didn't last a long time. It was when Ron Fuller had sold Continental, if memory serves me correct, to David Woods, and he started off USA Wrestling, and Bill Dundee and Bob Armstrong booked that territory, and I thought they did interesting, interesting stuff. So USA Wrestling as well as Continental, as well as Southeastern Knoxville and Southeastern Gulf Coast, Pensacola. Great, great promotions. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Randy, for actually being able to answer some of those questions, even if it's just a guess. I, I appreciate that. So why don't you go with your number seven? Number seven, I just have two more about, well, no, I have three more about modern or wrestling uh, since it kind of uh, ties ties in, do you care if if I do uh, seven, six, and five, or does that mess you up? You do it how you need to do it, Randy. You just do it how you do it, and then I can come back with mine. That's not a problem. Seven is something that's all over the place, and every wrestling talk show in the world's talking about it. And I think it will be great. I think they've been building for it for years. So number seven is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, returning at WrestleMania. WrestleMania is so important, so big. You need that big mainstream main event. And I don't know what the last time they had it. At this level, it might have been Rock and back in the day with John Cena, back that far. Obviously, we had the return of Steve Austin, one of the main events at one of the two night WrestleMania, and that was big. But so I think that's a very important, big time, big time at all. And you know, I think I'll I'll go one at a time. So I'll just do my number seven, and that's Rock returning at WrestleMania. Okay, no problem. And I totally agree. I think that would be huge. I definitely think you're exactly right. It's been since Cena was wrestling. So, you know, to me, that's huge. I think he's got to probably work his cousin to Roman. It's a simple thing. You know, you call yourself the head of the table. Well, I am the table. You know what I mean? So he can say all these things that, you know, he's acknowledged me as the head of the table. Really, he's been writing the story, whether The Rock has been involved in that and or not. The Rock can come back and say, nothing has fed our family more than me being the number one Hollywood star. Not only have I been the number one wrestling star at my time and can come back at any time and be that as well, but now I'm the number one Hollywood star in the family. So it's a great story. It writes itself, as you say. So It yes. books itself, not writes itself, but books itself. Well, I, I guess you... writing gets hate with me. Okay, yes, sir. Well, let me replace that with book. <laughs> <laughs> so my number seven is very simple. Honestly, I want to see more gimmicks. I need to see a gimmicks comeback. It kind of works with my diverse looks and styles at number nine, but my number seven, I want to see more gimmicks. It seems to me that around the time of the attitude era, when Kevin Nash, Scott Hall came in and they were not Diesel and Razor Ramon, of course, they would have been sued out the building. But that being said, I want to see gimmicks come back. Now, again, the Luchasaurus, that's a great gimmick. Whether or not he's any good in the ring, that's a different story. But I love gimmicks. I like masked guys. I want to see that old. I mean, I don't need to know the guy's real name. I want to know that he has a good gimmick. And whether or not it's something as simple as Sami Zayn being an honorary oos or, you know, Orange Cassidy with whatever his gimmick is, 
even if you don't like the gimmick itself, I like the idea that there are some people still there with some gimmicks. And and that's what I would like to see is a good gimmicks comeback. You know, you would get along with Jerry Lawler because Jerry Lawler was Mr. Gimmick and it's personal preference type of thing. I wasn't a gimmick type of guy. I just wasn't. I like the brawling styles. I like the personal issue, that sort of thing. There's certainly a... Here's the thing. I knew gimmicks were important, but leave it to Lawler, come up with them, or <laughs> leave it to some. But the wrestler, so many times back in the day, the wrestler would send you a, a picture or a videotape or whatever and say, this is the gimmick that I'm using right now. And you'd go as far as creating a gimmick. I don't think I've created one. Yeah. Uh, but I would normally know how to book it. Sure. Hey, that's what they need. I, and I don't want it all gimmicks. I don't need the rock and roll wrestling cartoon. I just want a few more. That's a, a happy medium between real. And of course, I'll, you know, my favorite wrestlers went by a name or a similar name to theirs Jerry Lawler, Terry Funk, Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, those guys. They had their name, or if it wasn't their name, it was something similar to a real name. Those are my, you know, those are usually in my top four. Five Mount Rushmore picks for pro wrestlers. And, you know, when it comes to that, they went by their real name. But at the same time, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, The King, Jerry Lawler, you know, Rowdy Roddy Piper, even a small gimmick doesn't hurt. But I get what you're saying. It's also possibly the differences is what we grew up with and the eras that you, you know, you liked wrestling first. And when I first liked wrestling, Probably similar age ranges as far as kids, but time frames and eras are a little different. And I know, you know, gimmicks aren't everything, but a good happy medium would be nice. But anyway, uh, number six for you, Mr. Hales. Number six for me, I won't spend a lot of time on this at all. Wrestling has always been creating new stars and creating the next main event. Now, I think uh, certainly that AEW is trying with multiple people, and MJF is one that's fantastic. They did a the recent deal where Chris Jericho put who was he? Who did Jericho put over two weeks ago? The Andretti guy, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. You have no. to, uh, and WWE as well, because where do you go after? Where do you go after Roman? After Roman's run is over, and it's always been about the top babyface in your promotion, in your company, who would be, maybe I'm just having a brain fart, who would be the top babyface right now, presented as a babyface, who would be that person in AEW, and who would be that person in WWE? WWE, I think a lot of people are leaning pretty heavy on the fact that Cody Rhodes may end up with that title. You that know, ties I, into to one of mine in a few minutes, for sure. But that's good. That's the plan. Plan. How about AEW? AEW, it's kind of a crapshoot there because they're either in the midst of making about 10 wrestlers that level, you know, booking those guys to, to that level. But, you know, really other than your idea of CM Punk, as far as someone that would get such a reaction, because right now, you know, Kenny Omega holding the title for as long as he did. I don't think that he's that guy. I just don't. He doesn't have that promo ability that even Roman figured out. But when it comes to it, you know, man, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a little. I, I almost think it has to be CM Punk for AEW. Very interesting. So, bottom line, new stars, the business built on that. You have to have it to grow and flourish. There's no doubt about that. Create new stars. And you talking about gimmicks a minute ago, that sort of thing, it can be a gimmick that's a star. It don't matter. They just need to create new stars. What's your number six? My number six is pretty simple, and it's been discussed for decades, probably from the beginning of time. But I know that a union 
for the pro wrestlers is never, ever going to work. It would never work because where would the level start for you to be unionized and where would the level stop, you know? So that's out of the prey, but I would like to see the WWE and AEW start the process of some sort of general health care for their workers, health care that lasts beyond their time in the company. Because I know my buddy Wolfie D, you know, he's had ups and downs in addiction and he's had ups and downs in different things like that. But I know for a fact that man could certainly use a little health care right now. And again, that's not the reason he's not on the show. That's not what, what I'm aiming at. But I would love to see if an old timer had worked at some sort of company, either whether that company had been purchased by a large one in a merger or anything to that effect. I would like to see some sort of general health care for the boys. That's just my opinion. I agree with, uh, certainly you're right as far as unions, that would never happen. Now, as far as health care, surgeries, injuries, that sort of thing, I think both AEW and WWE do a remarkable job. I think Vince McMahon and the WWE, as far as their wellness policy and and system, I think people that even people that that just did a cup of coffee there, they take care of them. But I agree with you a life lifetime thing because we're talking about especially with the WWE billion dollar business. So I agree with that a hundred percent, no debate, no argument, nothing more (laughs) I can say. I agree. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty hard to beat. So that's my number six of this top 10 of the new year's resolutions for pro wrestling in 2023 featuring the always excellent. One of my favorite guests ever that we've ever had. Mr. Randy Hales right now, we're going to take us a quick break. We're going to let you listen to a couple commercials. We're going to get Randy a breather here. Actually, it'll be for me. He's, he's the season pro. We'll be right back after these messages. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors. And we'll be right back with more live and in color with Wolfie D. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. 
All right, we're back with top 10 pro wrestling New Year's resolutions. And these are just wishes that we hope the wrestling business is listening and that it maybe would take a page or two from what we're thinking here and and maybe implement some of these. Now, normally the way it goes is Wolfie starts the 10 and I start the five. So being as you're our guest and you're awful nice, I'm going to go ahead and start this one here, Randy. This one is number five and it's super simple. And if you disagree, it'll blow my mind somewhere, somehow, somebody that is paying good money needs to hire Wolfie D. So AEW, Jeff Jarrett, I know you got somebody there. WWE, Road Dog, Impact. He's a TNA original, although I would prefer the other two. Any of them will work. Somebody needs to put Wolfie D in a company, paying him a good rate because that man has a great mind for the business and honestly has a lot of passion for it. And as you've heard over these 76 episodes, you can hear that Wolfie D has definitely got a great mind for the business. And I think he needs to be whether an agent, a producer, a trainer, some kind. Let's put Wolfie D to work by one of these companies. What do you think about that one? Not much to say. I think anybody that knows me knows that absolutely 110%. I would agree with that and absolutely think he would do a remarkable stuff because there, here's the thing. And Whoopi has mentioned this before on the Ric Flair's last match when he was, he certainly was a agent and a producer of matches. Nobody listened. Right. They don't listen anymore. One of the things you have to do, and I don't have this on my list because I just thought of it. But certainly there, you have to have veteran people with an open mind because the business has changed because it was different in the 70s than it was in the 60s, different in the 80s than it was in the 70s and the 90s, different than the 80s. It just evolves. But you have to have that veteran. And the core of the wrestling business has to always say the same. I'm a big believer in good against evil. Right. I'm a big believer in veteran talent. And the key to this is not a bitter older talent. And there's a lot of those, I can promise you, <laughs> that set their ways and won't change. But somebody, and Wolfie's not like that. He's got a young heart, and that sort of thing. So I 100% think 180 percent, 200 percent, as high a percent as I can go to say that is a wonderful, wonderful idea. Yeah, I just feel like the guy, you know, and that's one thing that you said is he is not set in his ways. I think Wolfie is able to understand different perspectives, whereas someone that is not willing to do that probably isn't going to be the best agent producer you can get. But someone like a Wolfie D, again, who has such a great mind, has been in the business as long as he has. And honestly, it's hard to be in the business as long as Wolfie has now because you rarely ever see a student starting at 14 years old, 15 years old. You hardly see that anymore unless they stay on the outlaws, as you say, the rest of their life. Hardly, very rarely, unless you go to somewhere like a Mexico or maybe even a Japan, do you see somebody getting a start out that early these days. And it is smarter to let them finish high school, let them go to college and then get them after that. But if you think about that, by the time most people graduate high school, then graduate college from the time that Wolfie started, Wolfie was already an eight year veteran by that point. Anyway, what's your number five, Randy Hales? One of the things I will beat to death on this show, on my show, on any show that I talk about wrestling is what we're going, what I've already said multiple times during this show. And I'll say it again right now, personal issues, they're all money. And when you've heard Jerry Lawler says in a lot of interviews, he does, and it's 100% true, Jerry Jarrett's office, which was normally at his house, but in his office, he had hung up on the wall, it says personal issues, they're all money. Something that the people can buy into personal stuff. I think the story of 2023 needs to be, and let me back up. 
because I did a show Tuesday night, this past Tuesday night, on what I called Jerry Jarrett's most successful and brilliant idea in his career, and that says a lot. The road to the gold, that he kind of started it in 73, and then when he went all the way in 74, switched the territory from a tag team territory to a single territory and went full steam ahead with Jerry Lawler. 1974 was without a doubt, there have been more higher grossing years, but attendance wise in Memphis, Tennessee at the Mid-South Coliseum, none better than 1974 and Jerry Lawler. And it was called the road to the gold. And now they didn't have a conclusion for that to, for 10 years, and it was another alliance because the first road to the gold was Lawler going for the NWA world title. Never got that. Finally, in 1988, the AWA world championship, when Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, dropped the title to Lawler. But that road to the gold is something just got emotionally, people got emotionally invested. My number five is Cody Rhodes winning the world title because the stories you can tell about that, and they've already started telling that story. The WWE title, the one title that Dusty Rhodes never had. They did a deal where... He got the one, two, three, but it was reversed, and it went back to superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. So that's an obstacle. Yeah. Not only wanting to be the world champion because anybody worth the salt, and I'm talking shooting too, uh, as a shoot, and obviously you have to understand it's a working business, and the title's a working title, but the top of the card, the top of the line, The big stars are the world heavyweight champion. Every one of them, if they don't have that goal to be the world champion, they're not a top guy, will never be the top guy, and I wouldn't want them as a top guy, period. Now, I think the story you can tell and throw obstacles in the way, and I'm certainly not thinking do it on the first time he challenges, but I'm thinking – telling that story of Dusty and he's fighting for his dead daddy and all that sort of thing is unbelievable. Not talking a lot about it. Just do it out at you yeah, without a doubt. And that's my number five. And I think that would bring a tear to spider Galento's eye. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That that's a no brainer. I think I said a little something about it earlier and I think that's got to happen. My number four Now, I had on my other podcast, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, I was lucky enough to have Magnum TA earlier in the year. And we were discussing certain things such as, you know, the current product and what he thought about scripted, you know, the WWE scripted style. Now, he gave us an example that actually opened my mind a little bit. He was talking about a certain thing that happened that basically Sting did a backdrop. It was a huge move and the cameras and the production team, they all missed it. And he was arguing that that was the reason that WWE should keep things scripted as far as the action goes. But one thing that I think they really should try to back off of as much as possible as far as scripting, quote unquote, is their promos. I feel like You've got so many guys working there. Heck, Road Dog is one of the greatest promos of all time. And he's standing right there and he can help. I know that everybody isn't perfect and maybe you can lean a little heavier on the scripted promos with them. But let some of these guys go, especially the guys that show that they can prove themselves and they're not going to go off on a crazy rant or something to that effect. I would like to see in 2023 and on forward, let these guys do a little less scripting in their promo. Whenever something is read and reread and then spoken, as far as that goes, I think you can tell versus when a guy is speaking it from his heart. That's my number four. 
And I 100% agree with that, and there's nothing more that I can really say to that at all. I'm a big believer, it's a hundred percent a big believer in giving talent bullet points. At the same time, I'm also a believer that not everybody can talk. Right. They really can't, and you have to help or coach some people more than you do others. Now, with the style that we have now, it's evolved to the style that it is. You almost have to work out the whole match. You almost have to. Now, I'm a big believer because it was a time that I was, I grew up in. And you ask Jerry Lawler, and you go back and ask Luthez, and you you ask Rick Player, and you ask Rick Steamboat, which is a little different deal because one of the greatest matches. A lot of people say in history is Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat. And Randy Savage wrote the whole match out move to move. He called the beads of sweat, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Every little uh, detail. I always thought, uh, from another era, I always thought if you go out there, because every crowd's different. Every crowd's different. If you go out there and have this whole thing in your mind, but you find out in 30 seconds, maybe it's a crowd that's there to be entertained and laugh and have fun, but you have in your mind nothing but violence. Well, you got to be able to just wing it right there in the ring. But if you done planned out every move, you're stuck with what you have. So certainly I think having to have talent that can, can adjust from uh, just on the fly because just like I said you know, they're expecting you know, to be entertained in the lap and you get violence the other way they're expecting violence and they get ha ha funny funny that's not going to work either right. that's not going to work at all Right. so that's my comment on that couldn't agree more what's your number four Randy I am going to kind of do this pretty quickly I'm going to try to do it quickly And in a way, it's going to make me sound like a hypocrite when I say this, (laughs) for sure. But I'm just telling you, if we could turn back the clock and erase people's mindset, this would be the greatest thing. And it's when the wrestling business, in my opinion, was the greatest. Now, the reason I say I'm a hypocrite saying this is that I'm being a guest or you're calling me a guest co-host of this show, which is Inside Wrestling Talk, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Inside the Business Wrestling Talk. Now, I produce and host two weekly shows, and I have a third show that I do, that I do a Inside Wrestling Talk. So, I get it. You have to change with the times. I understand that. And I certainly was one, not one of the first people that would call and I can name names, and I'm not going to. I'm not one of the first people that would call Dave Meltzer, and somebody had to smarten Dave Meltzer up to the right. wrestling business, right? The lingo and the wording and everything we did. A wrestler had to smarten him up. There's no doubt. So right. that's over with. But if you could turn back the clock, and I know as well as as anybody in any phase of life, you cannot put the toothpaste back in the tube. You yeah. just can't do it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with my next topic. My next resolution is basically put the toothpaste back in the tube and say, what the hell? Not everybody needs to be smart. The wrestling business is at its best Without a doubt, even when I was talking earlier and I suggested that punk comes back because I think you can convince people because they know what happened with punk and and the elite with the real fight. I think convince people, let them suspend belief and they think it's real. Same thing with Vince because Vince has already said He has already said, and it might have been on purpose, saying people close to him gave bad advice. I'm like, whoopee. When I said that, I said, that's the angle waiting 
to happen. So my whole deal is that cafe back. Let the people think. Let the people even know. But said, man, but I can't find out. That'll put a lot of people out of business. A lot of people out of business. Busted open out of business. Put me out of business. Put a lot of people out of business. Cornette out of business. But you need right. to protect the business. You need to protect it. Put that damn toothpaste back in the tube. Present the wrestling promotion, not take the comedy away, not take the entertainment away. Because believe me, Jimmy, wrestling's always been entertaining. There's always been funny stuff in eras that grew big, big money. But they didn't tell our secrets. They didn't let the cat out of the bag. They didn't tell how it happened. I think more mystery. I think, usually, here's another thing, Jimmy. You know why back in the day that wrestlers didn't, so they said they, maybe they had a girlfriend uh, in Memphis on a Friday night that they'd get drunk with and they'd spend the night with them and, and have a good time, right? right you know right. why the wrestler didn't tell the girl what they were going to do on TV on Saturday? The number one reason. It would, I mean, so she wouldn't tell. <laughs> no, the, it was impossible to tell. Back in that era and even yes. in the Power Pro day, it's because the wrestler didn't know. There you go. The okay. wrestler didn't know because the wrestlers would get it t- to TV on Saturday morning at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, whatever. At first, it was uh, one hour early. Then it was two hours early. But if wrestlers... For the moment, and there's exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, when they got their TV on Saturday morning, they didn't know what they were doing unless it was some kind of, if I wanted to do something where they come in wearing a cast and you have to tell them or you know, that sort of thing. But for the most part, you didn't want anybody smarting anybody up and you just waited to the gap. And the people asked me, and nine times out of ten, so what are you doing on TV? Do you have it booked yet? Yeah, of course I have it booked, but well, I'll let you know Saturday morning. And yeah. Jerry Jarrett would do that, and Jerry Lawler would do that, and everybody would do that. And I think that's just important, and I could talk for days on that subject. And a couple of things on the list, and I said I thought about it, they are impossible to do. It really is. The wrestling business was better when it was protected, when it was kayfabe, when people had a suspension of the belief. And I think you can still today, with the punk story, with the Vince story, with other stories out there, you can thank them caring. Now, they just care about the moves and the dives and the weapons and all that sort sort of thing. And the right. Cody story that I mentioned, that they're already leading toward When's the last time that fans really care because they care about uh, they care about what tights they're wearing, they care about what music they're playing. They don't care about who wins the match. Right. They don't care right. about who wins the match. And that's the things on my list that I'm I'm trying to say. And another thing to wrap this up, one thing I miss more than anything is the business always about good against evil. I've already mentioned that before on this show today. The Hills cheating to win, that sort of thing. The Hills being mean and nasty and that sort of thing. Half the time, you can't tell the difference between the good guy and the bad guy. And that's as simplistic as I can say it without saying Hill and baby face it. It's just good against evil. It's real, real simple. So I guess out of everything that I've talked about and this is my number four that i'll leave it at that i think the number three two and one are going to be pretty huge then mr randy hales because that was a very important one i know for a fact that tomorrow both of my well my other one may not but this one would end because 
this one is specific. You can always have, I had discussions about wrestling with my friends who were not in the business when I was not in anything to do with the business back as a kid. So I, I don't know if the other show would end, but I know for a fact this one would because Wolfie D would be a part of it and he would not be talking about it. If kayfabe, it would be like those pictures in Back to the Future. If you remember in that movie, as he's doing things to protect the future, images in the pictures would disappear and reappear. Well, this podcast would go away if, if kayfabe were somehow brought back into prominence and it should be because i agree i never loved wrestling more than when i believed everything about it and didn't and the secrets weren't spilled that's all i can say about that you're, you're exactly right i love it kayfabe i would welcome it back even though it would cost me this program <laughs> and <laughs> you, you know. could just present it in a, a different type of right. way absolutely yeah sure a different type of way so my number three is stop telegraphing moves Here's the biggest three that I, that bother me the most. When a couple of guys are running the ropes and one is going to throw a clothesline and the other guy doesn't duck down far enough for him to miss it, so he scrapes his knuckles on the ceiling. That's one of the things that bugs me about the clothesline and the telegraphing of moves. Another one is the constant, you know, congregation of tag team partners and opponents lining up together in a bunch outside, whether in conference with each other or not. And then a guy jumps and does a tope suicido, as you so like to say about the Excalibur or just a suicide dive or anything like that. And they all jump on them and it, they're all there to catch them. And even though it looks like it's supposed to be done, it, it still looks bad because it's all been telegraphed. And another one that I hate so much is the guy that is down on the, the mat and they are climbing to the, the opponent is climbing to the top rope and the guy finds out that he's not in position so he either rolls or wiggles or casually moves to a spot that he knows the guy on the top rope can hit those things right there kill me so much because they're so telegraphed i don't remember one time seeing or noticing when randy savage would jump off the top rope i don't remember one time a guy putting himself in position down there because a before randy got up there the guy was already in position i also don't remember anybody uh, Stan Hansen Lariat. I don't remember him scraping his knuckles on the ceiling to miss a guy with a lariat if he was ducking down because they ducked down low enough to where they actually did not have to do that. So that's my rant right now, Randy. And it's been my rant since the first episode of this podcast is stop telegraphing the damn moves. Nothing takes me out of it more than that. So kind of works with your last kayfabe but again yeah and that's a hundred percent um don't have anything to add to that because you said that great absolutely and i a hundred percent agree so we're down to one two and three but i guess yes, we sir. need to go three two one is that correct <laughs> that's it three is yours now mr hales knock it out now there is just going to be some of these are dream things that it's not humanly possible to do sure as a matter of fact number one is definitely will happen number two there's a big huge chance that will happen but the one of them all that i wish could make happen or somebody could make it happen i don't think there's any way for a lot of different reasons you could certainly do a show for this again i want to make it clear and then i want you to follow up before i say my number three and i want you because i'm telling the truth you agree with me so if people are just dropping in midway uh through you absolutely did not know any number of my top 10 and no. actually to be fair i said otherwise earlier but you did on that phone conversation initially four hours ago, you did tell me you're number 10. But besides that, you have no idea what I'm going to say, correct? Correct. Cor absolutely. Do not have a clue. The owner, founder, president of Power Pro Wrestling, Memphis Wrestling Born, Memphis Wrestling Bred. By God, when Randy Hales dies, I'll be Memphis Wrestling Dead. I say, for a lot of different reasons, bring back 
the Memphis Territory. I know there's people oh, all yeah. around because you were, would probably say, bring back Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Other people would say Mid-South Wrestling. Other people would say Calgary. Other people would say Ron Fuller's group. For me, by God, it's Memphis Wrestling. I think for the future of this business, without a doubt in the world, Memphis Wrestling to return in territory form. Now, yes. I'm saying getting a live television and Channel 5 is did a remodel in that wrestling studio that is not there anymore. But you can build your own, whatever. I'm saying live television on Channel 5. I'm also saying Louisville. These days, you can, because of the internet, it cannot be where it's on a week uh, delay basis because that, with the internet, everybody would know what you're doing on TV. Back in the right. day, they didn't. But you can, with signals and that sort of thing, it's absolutely possible to do. 100% these days with the technology, send that to Wave TV Channel 3 in Louisville. See, send it to Channel 7 in Evansville. Send it to Channel 18 in Lexington. Send it to Channel 17 in Nashville. So I'm saying bring back the Memphis Territory. I'm saying bring back the territory system. I'm saying you also have to go to the WWE and say, here's a chance. These guys are not just getting ripped reps in the Performance Center. Then I don't like the name of that anyway, Performance Center. They <laughs> are wrestling every night. Memphis on the money, not at the Mid-South Coliseum, because you can't sell out 10,000 people. I'm saying an 800-seat building, whatever, and go to a bigger building if you build for three or four big shows a week. Go to Louisville on Tuesday, Evansville on, on Wednesday. Have Thursday, Friday maybe, instead of running – smaller spot shows, that can be training days where you go, how developmental was in the beginning, these guys are giving, not only getting reps in the ring with a different crowd, uh, say five times a week, plus a TV, every week, every week after every week. You don't price your deal because you shoot with the WWF and say, hey, we need money to do this service for you. And yeah. before they go to the next level, and I think it's ridiculous, even though it's a good television, it's a great television most weeks, especially in the beginning, the NXT, but yeah, that confuses every uh, everything. And again, uh, you would have to put it on YouTube and it would still be out there more. But I'm saying bring a territory. My idea is the Memphis territory and bring it back absolutely and that is my dream that's i would would go back on the road again every day yes i would go to four uh move to nashville then i would drive the the 400 round mile around trip to memphis on monday then tuesday i would have to get my mind cleared again head <laughs> to louisville i'm thinking they're on eastern time and now I'm in Central Time everywhere, but I'm thinking on Tuesday when I get up, I got to be there in Louisville by Easter time of 6.30 or 7 o'clock. And then you do that, then back to Nashville that night. So that's about a 400-mile round trip. Then uh, you have uh, maybe 350, 400 to Evansville on Wednesday. Same thing. I think you can make that work if you have a good TV station in the right market and have enough of bringing people in, like from the time to time, Jerry Lawler, which would be all over my TV anyway, because I'm telling you, in Memphis and Louisville and Evansville and Nashville, I don't care if you have Roman Reigns, the Memphis wrestling fans, it's just Lawler's better than all of them. He can Absolutely. do a better promo. His Absolutely. psychology is better. And at 73 years old, he can have better matches. So I'm telling you right now, that's what I would do. And the people on the Internet, the keyboard warriors, are like, oh, that's old folks wrestling. Well, if that 
older gentleman or older lady can go out there and tear the house down and have them believe every word they say and every move they say, it absolutely would work 110%. This one, my number three, would be the hardest to do, the biggest financial commitment to do. But by God, I think it would work. By God, I think the people would love it. When I go back and I watch Power Pro Wrestling, 98 to 2001, I do the watch party. It's on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Randy Hills, a little cheap plug there. Yeah. But I do the archive of every one of those with the watch party. And if we go by my list that I've told you today, I won't do that show anymore because basically uh, it's an expose of how we do it. If I was <laughs> booking a current product, certainly I would think no more of that. They don't need yeah. to know what's coming. They don't need to know how we do it at yeah. all. But I watched the shows from 98 to 2001, and we're at show maybe 44, 45, and I'm thinking, and this is a little bit of me patting myself on the back and our talent on the back, but I'm thinking this, those shows, those Power Pro shows in that era was better than anything you can see without a doubt on national TV right now. Yeah. Old shows. It's just no doubt. So bring him Memphis Wrestling back. What do you think? I couldn't agree more. Everybody knows I'm a mid-Atlantic kid. Everybody knows I love pro wrestling. But I have said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more. Wrestling, even, even the arguments of mid-Atlantic and AWA and Mid-South, their contribution to the greater good of wrestling, no one territory meant more to the future stars, to the current stars, to the stars of tomorrow than Memphis wrestling. And if you have something like a Memphis wrestling cooking and booking like it used to do, there's zero chance that it would not be important in a small amount of time. I'm telling you, Memphis wrestling, I am a Memphis adoptee. Does that make sense? Meaning Absolutely. I have been I've been adopted by Memphis wrestling because I am now a, a massive fan of it. But growing up, I didn't get to see enough of it. Long story short, though, nothing meant more to pro wrestling than Memphis wrestling. And that's just where I think, you know, you, there's no disagreement from you. I'm positive. Oh, with, Jimmy, with Jimmy saying that right now, folks, that's not me saying it, but 100%. <laughs> because you right. can say it with me, he said he, he has the personal affiliation, but I appreciate that very much. And I think without a doubt. Now, I'm not going to don't overreact and think I'm jumping. And I'm not jumping to my next one. I'm just saying uh, my number <laughs> uh, 10 is not so much of a dream. A couple of things like putting the toothpaste back and the, bringing back the territory, that's unlikely. My number one and number two are something that absolutely positively can happen. But first... I think you go first, right? With the yes. Year. I'm going to give you my number two here. And this one is, I've got a great argument for it, but I don't think you're going to disagree being that you are one of the biggest PG-13 supporters as it goes. But I would love to see a modern renaissance of tag team wrestling to where tag team wrestling came back into a prominent booking on the card. Because here's the thing. If you think back in the day, you think the Fabs, the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express, the Road Warriors, you had even tag teams like the British Bulldogs, the Hart Foundation, the Dream Team, the East-West Connection, the Koloffs, the Andersons, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, the Funks, the Briscoes. You can name a million tag teams. And yes, you can name a lot of the modern tag teams, but the only tag teams that people seem to talk about, and for good reason, are the Usos. They talk about FTR, which absolutely are deserving of that. They talk about a few tag teams, the Young Bucks. They talk about a couple other tag teams, the Acclaim to some of the others. But as it is spoken and as it is said, you absolutely positively, I wish for a tag team wrestling renaissance in a sense to where it is put in a prominent spot where, you know, people cared enough about to see the Road Warriors as they did Ric Flair. People wanted to see 
the rock and rolls and the midnights as much as they wanted to see Dusty Rhodes. This is what I'm saying. I want to see a renaissance and a a, a bringing back of, of tag team wrestling importance. 100%. I couldn't say that any better. I agree with that 100%. Tag Team Wrestling has always been my favorite. It was my favorite booking that I was, it was all on me, certainly, and Power Pro uh, with the smaller crew, not so good at Tag Team Wrestling, but that era with PG-13, whether it was with Rich and Gilbert, whether it was the Smoky Mountain folks, I love Tag Team Wrestling, and as a fan, I love Jerry Lawler and Jim White, the first Hill Tag Team that I hated and wanted to see dead. The Don and Al Green type yeah. of thing, the interns, Tojo Yamamoto and Jerry Jarrett. And then you said the Fives, and then you said the rock and roll and everybody. I love tag team wrestling. And I think tag team wrestling, just because you have more action, because you have have four, two more people in the match. And then six man, mans, you, you have more there. Yeah, I 100% uh, Agree, but I would do it without six men or trios, whatever the hell they call it. Sure. Tag yeah. team titles. I would do it as a attraction um, based on a feud from the established tag teams. The heel tag team, baby face tag team, go eight, ten weeks. Then you have a heel and a fear and a baby face make the save. Real simple. Booker sure. one oh one, and you come back the next week with the six man tag. You know, Absolutely, I love it. Yeah, always money. So yeah, there well, you tell go. me, yeah, tell me this, and I, I, you, you are a man of the office of Booker, but you're also one with the boys too. You, you were kind of like a man of both worlds. You had a foot in the ring and a foot outside of it, and that's what's awesome about talking to you, Randy. Tell me this. So I've heard from the past that one of Eric Bischoff's biggest reasons was, and again, I am talking of this from a guy that's sitting here in 2023, looking back and knowing that both the WWE and AEW have a very bloated roster right now. I'm not talking about when times were thin and USWA and you had to really stretch it out some and you would bring in teams to work PG, but other than that, you didn't really have a lot of tag matches you know, up and down the cards at all times. Now, that being said, I've heard Eric Bischoff say this, and I'm, I'm assuming that something similar to that with Vince McMahon is that he did not see the purpose of paying four guys to do something that two guys can do. And again, it makes me almost question Eric Bischoff being a fan of pro wrestling as it is. But do you understand what he's saying at all? Like paying four guys what you can pay two guys to do? Yes, I understand that thought process, I just think a good tag match will be better than a good single match, and it can right. throw you more money, for right. sure. Why so the fabulous in- ones in Memphis drew so much money. That's why when people talk about mid-'80s wrestling, they talk about the best matches in the world was the Rock and Roll Express against the Midnight Express. You right. know, when they talk about the Von Erics against the Freebirds, and that evolved – and tag matches, then two six-man tags. I absolutely understand that they're saying, I want to save money. But the old saying, you got to spend money to make money. You right. have to spend money to make money. And tag team wrestling, I've always been high on, always been a fan of, and will always be a fan of. Well, I like what your answer was there, Randy. I don't think it could be said any better. So I want to hear your number two, my friend. My number two, and it's something not 100% a done deal, but it's something for the last three or four months I've been working on. Now, I live in Jonesboro, Arkansas, 70 miles from Memphis, Tennessee, about an hour away. We used to watch wrestling from either Channel 13, then and starting in 1977, Channel 5. Most people will think that Channel 5 wrestling, TV 5 wrestling. Jonesboro was always a successful regular stop for the Jonesboro territory. There's a lot of history Going back in the 50s, when you had the original Gorgeous George Sr. 
coming to Jonesboro, Arkansas. Power Pro Wrestling's one of the most successful clubs that we had was the Earl Bell Community Center in Jonesboro. Again, I'm proud of Power Pro Wrestling. 98 to 2001, the wrestling world changed, the television world changed. The TV station wanted to convert. They thought we can make more money on news. We need a bigger news studio. So the wrestling went away. It went away. But Jonesboro has always been a successful wrestling town. Coming up this year, as a matter of fact, the date of the anniversary, April the 16th of 2023, will be the 25th anniversary of Power Pro Wrestling. One thing that I've talked to Tyler about, I've talked to multiple people about, and that is to have the 25th anniversary Power Pro Wrestling. I have a scaled down version and the big time version. And I don't want to tip my hand too much. One of the matches on the card that I would like to do is a triple threat tag team match with the teams of Tommy Rich and Doug Gilbert with the Rock and Roll Express and with the boys from the hood, PG-13, J.C. Ice, and Sir Whoopi D. One of the matches that I was thinking about for that big card. Also, I'm not going to tip my hand at all, especially the honest to God truth is that I certainly don't want to throw Jerry Lawler's name. This is all card-wise dream matches and dream thoughts. I will not say this match except Jerry Lawler doing double duty that night, but Jerry Lawler against somebody he had his most successful program with in the Power Pro Wrestling era. Uh, so I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. And then certainly take advantage of a few other things. And I will mention one thing in my number one, but take advantage of these meet and greets and take advantage of these reunions. And they've done them in the Memphis area before. And you can bring, say, bring in a Kurt Angle and bring in a, a, a Scott Steiner and bring in uh, whoever you can think of and also bring in the past stars of Memphis. I obviously have Superstar Bill D there and I have Jimmy Vant there and I have Dutch Mantel there. If you can get the fabulous ones to come in and have the meet and greet type of situation. And then I'm still an idea from a match I did March the 7th, 1994, the very first Monday Night Memories some of the guys that meant a lot to not only Power Pro Wrestling, but Memphis Wrestling, and have a a certainly uh, Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And then it can be small or big. And one of the things that I was thinking and I have been researching and talking to different uh, people, and I'm sure there's roadblocks, certainly not a 100% thing, I'd like to to produce that as a television and have it on Fight TV. The roadblocks are people that you would want on the card, like a Jerry Lawler or other people, might have it in their contract with the WWE. They can't do it. You right. know, so that's just a dream, and it might not happen. But something that I've had phone calls today, as, as late as today, something that I have – you know, certainly people that are helping me with it. It's a great thing. Of course, uh, one of my, uh, certainly my right-hand guy at Power Pro, Brandon Baxter, have him involved. And certainly he's the number one media guy in Jonesboro right now with the backing of his radio station, the biggest radio station group in not only Jonesboro, one of the biggest radio station groups in the state of Arkansas, have him a big part of it. He and I will hopefully would be able to do that together and we would have the back end of the radio station. I've talked to sponsors and every 
thing. So honestly, from a promoter standpoint, where all the risk is not on me financially, but it's sure. something that works, would work. I think it'd be successful We're running out of time a little bit now because I'm thinking April of 2023, well, certainly in my mind, I have PG-13 on that card. Maybe, I don't know, uh, if you're in the Carolinas, you may be too far away to come, but would love if you could come to the Power Pro Wrestling reunion card. If it's happening, I'm going to be there. I promise you. I might even sell a program for you or something, Randy. All we'll, right. We'll figure something out. But if I'm there, you can put me to work. And if it's happening, you can come on here and promote it at any time on any of my shows. So we'll make that happen as well. And I don't think you'll need my shows to promote it in a way that'll make it successful. But I'm offering those up as well as a way. And I've got chills as you were talking about it, Randy. So I truly hope. I do think Power Pro is one of the best promoters emotions that people have slept on as far as not seeing enough of and not knowing enough about. First of all, if you're not watching your show, then you're losing out on some very good stuff. But at the same time, if you are watching your show, you're learning something that even if it's just a, a reminder of something you watched in the past, man, I tell you that Power Pro stuff is just an excellent example of what Memphis offered the greater wrestling good. Let me do, let me just say this, and one of the things you said that some people don't know about it, and the reason they didn't know about it, it was a the television show and the promotion. It was after Burt Prentice had already taken care, taken over Nashville. Uh, Louisville was taken over by Danny Davis and Jim Cornette, that sort right. of thing. So there wasn't any spot for that. Memphis was on one television station, the Power Pro Wrestling, rather, was on one TV station. But I think if you give it a chance, go uh, to my Facebooks every Monday night at 7 Central, Blue, Twitter, uh, the show is, is on there. And, of course, in the archives, it's not live on YouTube, but you can get everything there at YouTube.com at Randy Hills. Are you ready, Jimmy? Are you so ready for your number one? Yes, sir, Randy Hales. And, you know, with that being said, my number one. It's as simple, and it's been said by every wrestler that I appreciate. Some that I didn't even really enjoy as much as the others, but it's something that's a universal thought for most of all the wrestlers from my generation that I enjoyed watching. And it's super simple, and it could be done, and it's very simple to do. Learn how to sell again. And I know it's something that's been said a million times by all of the best. You can say it till you're red in the face, but I genuinely feel that you talk about the personal issues, how that makes the most money. That's no brainer. Honestly, the personal issues are nothing if you're not selling it. And, you know, Wolfie and I were talking the other week about how, you know, they start to yell boring at a sleeper hold or, you know, anything super simple like that, that takes the match into a rest spot, anything like that, they start to give a boring. And I said it could work again if everybody bought into it. That's one of the problems I think about with modern wrestling is not everybody is on the same page, but I do truly feel like if everybody learned and pushed it as the way it should be, people need to sell again. And I mean actual selling, the kind that makes your mother cry, your girlfriend cry, your kids cry, the kind that, you know, when Ricky would do simple things, and I mean Ricky Morton, he would look to the crowd if he was hurting, he would look and he would make that hand, please help me. Everybody in the crowd felt that. It's it's almost so simple that it doesn't even deserve much more conversation on it, Randy, but learn how to sell again. That's my number one. That is absolutely fantastic, and I'll just have a short response whether you're you go back in my era of Memphis wrestling Jerry Jarrett was a unbelievable seller Tojo yeah. Yamamoto was an unbelievable seller Jerry Lawler was an unbelievable seller Jeff Jarrett was an unbelievable seller PG-13 was an unbelievable seller people say the best seller of all time was a Rick Morton people say Ricky Steamboat was a great seller over and over and over and over 
again. But one thing I think, one person that I don't think gets a credit for selling because the comeback is not going to blow all the way it needs to blow, pop as big as it needs to pop. It's a baby face. Don't sell for the heels. And right. the people's emotionally scared to death for that baby face. They're scared to death. Back in the days, that's what caused rats. People would risk going to jail. Or let me say this. They would risk getting beat up by a big wrestler or going to jail by trying to help the baby raise. But they would risk getting beat up, didn't hurt, or going to jail to help their wrestler. They were so attached to it. Now, right. another person that's so great, they don't get the credit for it. Not one of my favorite wrestlers, per se, but certainly one of the biggest box office in the history of this business is Hulk Hogan. Hogan yeah. sold and sold and sold. If it was five minutes or it was 20 minutes, he just had to fill it, and he would then hook up, and just like Jerry Lawler in Memphis, Tennessee, pull that strap down, and then they would blow. Then you do what? Uh, what finish? Uh, whatever finish is necessary that that the direction that you wanted to go. So that's a great number one, a super number one. And um, you know, I you did it great, and uh, <laughs> and it's such an important. It's a missing part of this business. Sell people, as George Gillis used to say to Harley. I said in a world title match to. Harley Race, George Gillis said, Daddy says sell. Daddy <laughs> says sell. Well, Randy says sell, people. You got to sell. It's not a sign of weakness. I think a lot of the modern talent thinks it is a sign of weakness. It right. is your money, people. It, it is. is your money. And that's all I have to say on that. Well, hey, you're the star of the show today, being that it is live and in color with Randy Hales. Or how about this? Live and in color with Randy X. <laughs> oh, no, I hate that deal. I'm no. just kidding. It was Zero. a joke. I'm just kidding. That was well, just a joke. Turn this video, if you can call it that. <laughs> no. I, I knew that it was something you didn't like. That's why I was joking with it. Anyway, what is your number one? This is another dream match, or not a dream match, a dream sequence. And I'm telling you, I mentioned it a little bit bit ago because I said at the Jonesboro Wrestling Reunion, and I want it big and done right. I want it to be on like a fight TV. I want it to be streaming where the world can get Power Pro Wrestling, where the world can get Memphis Wrestling, classic Memphis Wrestling, territory wrestling i want a feature event at the memphis wrestling hall of fame and i'll tell you the headline act in a minute but there's so many deserving people the last time we did this it was at a meet and greet the promoter had brought different people in and we were able to induct scott steiner and kurt angle and that was absolutely fantastic because they started our career here. I want some of the mainstream people, like my good friend Harry Del Rios, the Spellbinder. I want him inducted. There's so many people that I think so important that might be overlooked that absolutely that night, the 25th anniversary, we'll do the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame not just the power pro, because I'm the son of a bitch that invented it, that created it, that's in charge of it. So I would like to do that that night. And the main event act of that night, going that night into the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame. Again, the boys from the hood, Sir Whoopi D, J.C. Ice, PG-13, as the headline act for the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame at the Jonesboro Power Pro Wrestling Reunion. And that's all I got. I love it. And I want to be there for that, too, because that, to me, I did talk about putting Midnight Express in the WWE Hall of Fame. And I don't know if the the, the PG boys, I, I don't know if they have enough time on the on the WWE stage to deserve that. But I would love to see them, you know, in that 
Hall of Fame. But again, you are correct. The Memphis Hall of Fame, to me, is incomplete without the boys from the hood, honestly. Love that. I think that is the true number one of the show, Randy. (laughs) This has been a lot of fun, my man. Are we going to... Take a break and come back and talk modern stuff, scoops, news. What are we doing next? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm calling an audible. Normally, we do Ask Wolfie D anything or current affairs. But what I think, since we've got a good amount of time in here, I think Wolfie D from his sick bed right now, not feeling too well. Hopefully, he pulls through this without any kind of flu. I did mean to say earlier, we do know that it isn't COVID-19. He did take a test for that. Hopefully, it's just a cold. He sent in his top 10. And what we're going to do in this next segment is we're going to talk about Wolfie D's top 10. And we'll do it in a brief manner, but at the same time, give the man his due, especially since he made this list. So we'll be right back with Wolfie D's top 10. DJ, hit the music. Still loving in color, homie Wolfie D. We got a cap for your dome. All right, we are back. Once again, normally current affairs here. Normally we do a little Ask Wolfie D anything or whatever you guys want us to do. But in this regard, since it's our 2023 wishes for pro wrestling's New Year's resolutions, I'm going to read you Wolfie D's here, Randy. And and I'm not even really going to comment much. I want to hear what you thought. So this is kind of similar to what I said. And these are in no order because he didn't put a number by them. So I'm going to just read them in the order that he sent them. So the first one again is the one that I brought up about telegraphing moves. He says, no more waiting on the suicide dive outside of the ring. It's the worst. He hates that. I agree. Yeah, no problem. Stop saying who you want to work next year. So many guys, especially in the outlaws or the indies, however you call it, they go on their Facebook page and they say, I want to work Johnny, Charlie, and Johnson. You know, to me, it's almost similar to the kayfabe one that you gave there earlier. But honestly, I can't stand that guys are even friends with their opponents on Facebook. I agree with that one. Just because they know that there isn't kayfabe anymore, stop rubbing it in their face. Meaning, even though they know things are a work, you don't have to show that it's a work. And here's his fourth one. Quit acting like backstage fights are something new. (laughs) <laughs> That's the good one, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Memphis how many, invented it. Memphis invented it. I mean, how many, just a rough estimate, how many do you think you've seen that, that have, have been through your career? Oh, I couldn't even come close. Uh, I mean, f- for his fights, I mean, you, a lot of times we stayed away from the backstage area. You know, right. we, we re- really did as as uh, we really did. So uh, the most I've ever seen the backstage fights, I see watching Raw, SmackDown, or Dynamite, or Rampage. You know, right. they beat it to death. Yeah. Well, here's his number five. He said, bring back the nostalgia of the masked wrestler. You know, Wolfie loving his cyberpunks, that tag team that came in when they went away. I don't know who the cyberpunks were, but when it came down to it, he loves a masked wrestler. And I don't know why he loves them so much, but he's got some kind of weird tie to the cyberpunks. I never have figured that one out, Randy, of course, in full kayfabe there. The, <laughs> what do you think about masked wrestlers? I love my masked wrestlers. I love the su- masked superstar. I love the masked oh, assassins. Yeah. I love Mr. Wrestling number two. Yeah, Matt is so mysterious. Back in the day, the interns drew a lot of money in this territory. It goes back since the beginning of time. Absolutely great. And I would love to see masked wrestlers again myself. Hello. Good one. All right. I agree. Now, his next one is gimmick finishes, heels cheat, and so on and so forth, meaning we need more gimmick finishes. He he likes the idea of gimmick finishes. Now, I know you said you, you're not so much on gimmicks as a as a gimmick, <laughs> and I think people understand what I'm saying, but he, yeah. he wants a little more heel cheating gimmick finishes. Now, right now, first gimmick I ever remember – uh, being established by a heel is Jerry Waller was famous for the chain and I keep a chain on my set and I don't know where the hell it is uh, but I love the old quick little the heel pulls out that milks the chain to the people and whacks him with it one two three yeah absolutely yeah. great a foreign object that you're not allowed to say anymore I'm all into that one 
Right. Me too. I agree. So the next one he has is take care of yourself for longevity in the business. I think Wolfie D's got a, a few major injuries right now that he's trying to figure out through doctors. And the good news is, is he's going and get those looked at and taken care of MRIs, CAT scans and the like. And it, it could be as simple as be properly trained in the business. Take care of yourself for longevity. That's, that's a pretty simple no brainer. And honestly, that could go to anybody in any walk of life. All right. The next one is make everything mean something, meaning, you know, nothing little slips by everything you do should mean something that's a no-brainer right absolutely also the fans he wishes that the fans understood that Meltzer is not a booker also probably the boys as well but I do feel like Dave Meltzer does try to book even from his office far away he tries to be a booker and i'm sure that's pretty frustrating for the bookers that are doing the job well tony khan does the same damn thing yep it's true so the veterans can help you i know that's a big one on wolfie d's list even though it's his number two he says the veterans can help you remember that and i think that was one thing that he had the problem with at jim crockett promotions reunion there for the rick flair's last match was that the veterans were not listened to but they can help you who did you learn how to do what you did from randy watching people that did it right do it and then they would, and what I did basically was like cat fight type, type of thing and just fighting and, you know, it wouldn't, you know, I, I couldn't, I've never locked up in my life or, or hit an arm drag or a drop kick or any of that uh, thing. So, so, I, you know, I, I just don't, I'm a, somebody that's had professional wrestling matches and, and some that drew money, but I don't consider myself at all as a professional wrestler at all. Right, right. That makes sense. But you learned from the people that did it before you, either in any way, whether you were watching it or listening, you learned from the veterans. Oh, then, and, and and with promos and that sort of thing, and as far as knowing the business, a lot of people tell me from Tojo to Eddie Marlin to Jerry Jarrett to Jerry Lawler to Bill and D to Dutch Mantel, you know, you just have to be able to learn from everybody. Yeah, you yeah. have to have the attitude. You can't have the attitude. So I, I know this better than anybody. I don't need to be told. You can't have. You have to be willing to improve and willing to listen to advice and willing to do things different. Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, that could be. That's one of those that could be in a plaque on a wall in a Booker's office for sure. That that sentence you just said right there. So Wolfie D's number one is watch yourself on tape and not just others. And I think that's almost the best one he said out of all of them, because if you're not watching yourself, and I know Wolfie was a big proponent of this, meaning he was learning from the last match that he was just in of what to do and what not to do. And if it looked bad, he took it out. And you can watch others and take things. Like I, if I were a young wrestler, and I'm not young by any means, but if I were and I watched a Wolfie D match, I could probably garner a lot of knowledge from that match. Match. But being as it is said, watching yourself do things is almost the most important thing you can do aside from proper training and learning from veterans. Watching yourself on tape has got to be something that's almost it's almost like what's the term where they have in the NFL and, and, and pro sports. You're watching film and you're watching what you did wrong to learn from the next time. I mean, it's a it's almost a blessing because not everybody gets that opportunity to watch themselves and correct, you know? No doubt. So that was his top 10 pro Good. wrestling New Year's resolutions. Wolfie does send his best to all of his listeners. Thank you all so much for sticking around with us through this year. You know, it's so meaningful to know that we have as many listeners listening to us each week just talk about pro wrestling. So Wolfie says he loves you and thank you all for hanging in with us and he'll be back next week with a new show. But before we go anywhere, Randy, I just want to say thank you so much. Not only 
for coming on the show today, but thank you so much for all you did for pro wrestling and all you do today. Randy, it's a pleasure to know you and be a friend of yours now because in the long run of things, I know that you love wrestling about as much as anybody actually can. So Randy, Thank you for showing up on the show today. Thank you for turning out a top 10 list in record time. I would love for you to tell the people about your shows and, and where they can find you right now. My social media on Facebook, just search for Randy Hales. And on Twitter, it's at RB Hales. I'm also on Twitch and those shows. Also, uh, my Facebook pages are the Randy Hales Personal, Power Pro Wrestling Facebook, and the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame page, Facebook it's at RB Hills on Twitter. And then archive, it's not live shows because I do two live shows a week. It's the Monday Night Power Pro Wrestling Watch Along. Jimmy was talking about that earlier and real proud of it. The Monday show is very successful, and I break it down and give inside information. And everything is on YouTube.com slash at Randy Hills. I would appreciate because I just started the YouTube channel. I would appreciate anybody listening to this show today. If you do me the favor, youtube.com slash at symbol Randy Hills and find me and then subscribe to the thing. And uh, we have the archives of Talking Memphis Wrestling, the Tuesday night shows with Michael St. John, who was the voice of the Kamala video and the Hulk Hogan debut in wrestling video. Michael is just great. He's with me every Tuesday and two friends of mine. Pat Trammell, and also Chris Ellis, and we talk Memphis Wrestling on Tuesday, and then I have a show about whatever I want to talk about. It can be personal, it can be family, it can be sports, it can be not very much politics, it can be any issue of the day, and that's the Randy Hill Show, and we do that from time to time, and that's a brand new show. So I also want to say, Jimmy, I think you do a great job creating this show, coming up with the subjects of this show, and do a great job today with me leading me on this interview, and you do a great job. You have great chemistry with Wolfie. I love this show. It's a great show. I want to encourage everybody to listen to it. Maybe you're listening to it because you saw me advertise it on my show make sure you subscribe to it make sure you support the advertisers make sure you give it a listen every single week because it's the one one thing i like about it it's a variety show every week about different subjects that talks about classic wrestling and also talks about about the modern wrestling as well and it's a very good show i want to wish OVD. Kelly Warren Wolf is what I call the man. I won't wish Warren a great, great recovery. I know all kinds of people having this crap. Just get better, Wolfie, and hopefully in April I'll see you at the Earl Bell Community Center in Jonesboro. Cross your finger we're having that happen, and cross your finger – Jimmy Street is not full of shit. Just telling me to my face that he's going to be there. Would love to meet you face to face. And I had a ball doing this, but I'm hungry, man. I'm hungry. I hadn't ate all day long. Well, go get you some food, Randy Hales. And once again, for Wolfie D, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, for the always welcome and always amazing Randy Hales, I'm Jimmy across the street, and this has been Live and in Color with Wolfie D. See y'all next time. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. 
That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes, and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah. If you're a fan of rock music, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my podcast. It's called the Decibel Geek Podcast. We've been doing it for about 10 years now. We talk about Kiss. We talk about Ozzy. We talk about Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and Metallica. We talk about all the legends from the 60s and on up to brand new bands that you should be hearing about today that you're not going to hear on the radio. It's Decibel Geek. Wherever you find your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you love rock and roll, I can almost guarantee you're going to love my show. Hey, everyone. This is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you are interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M, the man, 73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving it, call up from Russia, mother. Utilize a hubcap, I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Played low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks from over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be right. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When my finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. I'm gonna wind it up. And I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. You got, got a cap for your dome. You got a cap for your dome. You got a cap for your dome. 
This has been a James Rock Street production.